Hello and welcome to Small Things Brought Together. My name is Robin Love. And welcome to episode three in season two. So in this season, by the way, you might hear some hammering in the background. Someone is doing construction downstairs. I have no control over this, so I'm sorry about any noise in the background. But uh, so in this season, as I was saying, um, I'm talking directly with artists about their process, their creative process, because as you know, Small Things Brought Together is an exploration, an ongoing exploration of the creative process. And central to my mission <laughs> to get the word out is to talk to artists of all variety. And um, so I am thrilled to talk today with Walena Nanton. So Walena is an incredible uh, craftsperson and artist, uh, designer, and just so inspirational in uh, so many ways. And I have a few things, uh, links to videos and um, other images in the comments. So after you're done, please do explore down there. So let's take a listen to what Milena has to share with us about her work and her creative process. Okay, so we're recording. So welcome, Milena. This is Milena Nanton, and I'm so happy that you're here on Small Things Brought Together. And I guess um, I definitely would love you to share whatever you'd like to share with everyone about yourself. But if you don't mind, I'll just begin a little bit with how we met, which was I had the opportunity to do a project that actually had a budget where I could pay people <laughs> to help me. And I put out a call for fast crocheters, people who can crochet really fast. And Walena answered that call <laughs> 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 for a big project. I was thinking I could put a link to that video that resulted, um, actually there were like three videos that resulted uh, in the comments um, of this episode so people could watch that if they want. Um, yeah, so that's how I met you as um, perhaps the world's fastest crocheter. <laughs> and I guess I just want to say later I was talking to Barbara, who was also one of the crocheters, and she said to me something like, I think Walena is one of the best crocheters in I don't know whether she said like North America <laughs> and, and, and she's totally under recognized. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I thought when I was thinking about who could I invite to come have a conversation, I was like, I know someone who could needs a little bit of light shown onto her. <laughs> so, so welcome, Walena. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. <laughs> So I don't know what you, you, you're welcome to share anything, but maybe just a little background about who you are and where you live and that kind of thing. Okay, my, well, um, I've been crocheting since I was eight years old. I learned from my godmother, Ollie Moss. Um, she taught me and I've been crocheting ever since. Um, I live in New York. Um, I grew up in the Bronx, New York City, and now I live in Westchester, a little suburb outside of New York City. And I've been crocheting for a while. And then I think in around 1991, I started crocheting mostly like blankets with tapestry crochet. I started doing sweaters and um, dresses. And then that just progressed. And I've been doing it ever since. I, um, I joined the Crochet Guild in 1999. I was president for that for about two to three years. And then I'm still a member of the Crochet Guild. And I've um, done different activities such as charity work, who's donated blankets. So I've used my skills for different things, just not for, um, I guess, personal crocheting for myself and friends, but also for charities um, to help out. One was um, Mothers with Children, and they were in a homeless shelter, so I've done that. And that progressed into a school taking over, and they did that for a few years, where the kids learn how to crochet and would donate the blankets to charity. And then I would have to fix them up sometimes <laughs> if they were a little weird or they didn't have the perfect shape. Um, so that was my specialty with their blankets. So I always made sure that the kids were, um, the kids saw their blanket, 
and that every blank was used, even if we had to tweak it a little bit. <laughs> so I guess that's a little background on me. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> so are you still doing that, teaching kids to crochet? Well, I'm not teaching them right now, crocheting. I did do a class last year for the um, Crochet Guild, and hopefully I can do that in the future, do some more classes. Mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> Great. Well, and, you know, um, well, when I was thinking about, you know, just sort of this general category of creativity, I mean, in a minute, we'll look at some of your garments that you've made. And I know you also, um, you do something with Barbies, which I thought I would ask you about, because I don't fully understand what, you know, you, what, how you got into that, um, having just seen images on social media. And, and I thought, I, I feel like, don't you also do some kind of dancing? Yes. Uh -huh. So maybe we'll get into that too. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I thought maybe also it would relate to some of the garments because I think sometimes, isn't it, you make for your dancing? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, maybe I'll share. I'm going to share my screen and uh, we can look at images. So you generously shared a lot of photographs and I, as is my want, I put them together in a way that I think makes sense. But often when I start talking to the artist, <laughs> they they kind of let me know that, uh, I haven't got them in the right order. So <laughs> feel free to correct me. Yeah. I guess one thing I want to ask you, because I consider this um, series to be really like my, my original in impetus for making this was that I think it's just a human nature. It's just human nature to want to create. And unless that somehow gets squashed, usually in childhood, <laughs> then people are just innately creative. And so I'm always trying to um, encourage everyone to do something that, that kind of meets that need in us. Because I think even when it has been kind of squashed down, uh, it's still there. Right. And, and if you offer people opportunities to let it out, then it just makes life so much nicer yeah, and I mean yeah. teaching kids how to crochet is so great <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so I guess I wanted to ask do you consider yourself an artist does that title is that important to you um you know do you ever think about yourself in those terms or not and and does that matter um I believe I'm a creative um artist relating to crocheting and crafts because I've done um, many crafts over the years, and I've actually toured a program like in the 90s to kids. So mm -hmm. it was called Creative Fingers, where we did different crafts and, and exposed them to different arts and crafts where they would not see it normally. So it's just not just like construction paper or a sequence. We did more stuff. They did, they used yarn, they used paper, but they rolled it. So it was different things, and exposing kids to that was important to me because some of the schools don't have that anymore. So that was bringing my creativity and my crafts background to children. So I think I've carried that over the years. I got into scrapbooking. Um, I did, um, I guess, some type of painting, but then I stuck with crocheting. So crocheting is the, the um, outlet that I use now. And um, I continue to use that and I enjoy it. And so I think I'm in between like an artist, but I also like to be a craft person. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, for me, it's definitely about like just having a way to express yourself. Right. You know, it doesn't have to be complicated, actually. Right. <laughs> but as we'll see when we look at your clothes, oh my goodness, I see them as complicated. Oh. <laughs> well, let me just share. I'm going to share my screen so we can see your okay. images. And then uh, we'll, I'll start. I made a little PowerPoint um, slideshow. So we'll, I'll get that started. Okay. Let's see. So again, I kind of put them together in a way that sort of made sense, which okay. I really, <laughs> I, I, frankly, I started with like sweaters <laughs> to okay. dresses to long dresses. That's how I arranged them. That's fine. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess we can assume that a lot of people watching will have zero understanding of crochet. Okay. And then there's probably people like me who have a little bit of understanding, but what you're doing goes way beyond 
uh, a little bit of understanding. So maybe even just to start with, what what is crochet and and here's one for people who do know. Why is it different from knitting? And why is it so annoying on movies when people are <laughs> supposedly <laughs> knitting <laughs> and they're holding a piece of crochet work? <laughs> so, yeah, so what is crochet? What is crochet? Okay, crochet is um, a series of, the crochet is using a hook with yarn and making a series of loops to form either going from bottom to top and creating loops on top of one another. That's how I would describe crocheting. And it's a little different from knitting. Knitting is um, loops, but it's um, with two needles and you're using both hands with the needles in your hand. And the difference is crocheting is a little bit thicker than knitting. So when I always tell people about knitting, I'm like, look at your sweater that you get in the store and that's knitting, <laughs> you know, and then crocheting is a little bit different. Um, I enjoy, I, I enjoy crocheting and um, I wanted to create crochet where it was like a solid fabric mm -hmm. more than just lacy because a lot of things that you see in crocheting is lace and that's not what I wanted. I wanted to show crocheting as a solid fabric and that it could be equal to knitting. So you could either do crocheting um, with a sweater or knitting with a sweater without having so many um, lacy stitches in the garment. And that was how I approached my crocheting. I wanted to show it as a solid fabric. Yeah, and you know, you kind of allude to this, but there is a little bit in the sort of knitting world that, that crochet gets like second class citizenship. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. We grew up with that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I also really appreciate your work because uh, you know, I mean that just tosses your work tosses that idea out the window. The skill and expertise that you have is just so astounding. Thank so, you. So I don't, I guess I chose this one first only because it's so bright and beautiful <laughs> and it really catch, caught my eye. But I see, you know, I see that you've used the crochet as like a solid fabric, but there's still different techniques going on. I mean, yes. uh, you know, there's color work and then there is a little bit of um, different stitches being used, which create the, a different fabric. Like, so if you're doing a tighter stitches, like a single crochet, then that's right. like a super thick, right? And, yes. And then, you know, I see double crochet in there, <laughs> but I guess, I, so I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about um, what you used in this garment um, okay. technique wise. So in this sweater, what I wanted was a Halloween sweater. So I picked up the orange and then I like the rainbow colors. So I found, um, so when I'm picking or trying to do a sweater, I pick a color, orange. Then I try to find out what I have in my stash or if I have to make a yarn run. And then I wanted to add the rainbow. So I found two different types of rainbow yarn that I could use. And in this one, so this is one of the earlier ones that I did because I would do it like in a straight rectangle in the front. So like, it's like, the front has two panels and, the, and there's one back panel. So mm -hmm. in the front panel, I went from top to bottom. And then later on, you'll see how I changed directions in my crocheting. So in the, and on the back one, there's one that changed direction. I just added to it because it was going one direction. So I added the bottom and then the top. And um, I like to do tapestry crochet with it where you change colors um, in the row. So like the top and the back, you can see the light orange and the dark orange, or you can see the rainbow and the orange. That's like tapestry crochet because I'm changing colors as I'm going row to row. Yeah. And so I, that's one of the things I love to do with that. Yeah, I, I feel, I wish, I wish we had the capacity for you to give us a lesson because I really <laughs> want to learn that actually. <laughs> well, we'll see. I mean, you okay. do some unbelievable work with that. So let's just see what's next. So then... This is, I couldn't tell if this was a sweater or a dress because I know okay. you do both. Okay, so this is a sweater because it's a little short for a dress. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, this, I love pineapples. So in some of my designs, I'll try to incorporate the pineapple design, which is a lacy stitch. And then um, sometimes if I want to run a lacy stitch, I'll use a granny square. Because like granny squares get a bad rap sometimes, but I like to show it in a different view. So you see on the bottom, I added the squares on the bottom and those are granny squares. So you can use them more, you know, it can be incorporated in different things. It doesn't have to be a complete granny square sweater. You can just add it as you go. Um, so in this sweater, the front 
has various oranges that I go looking for and then I'll find like a variegated yarn, which is mm -hmm. in the back panel in the middle and then try to incorporate it in the, in the um, garment. Mm -hmm. And then I always make the sleeves the same. So when you look at the garments, the sleeves will always be the same. The front, the back and the sides will be different, but the sleeves will always remain the same. And again, I use tapestry crochet. If you look at the front of the garment, on top, I've incorporated like the variegated yarn with the oranges, um, just to give it a little bit more style. And I like to incorporate tapestry, so that's why I did it that way. And then on, also on this garment, I've, I've used different sizes. So I'll go from top to bottom, and then I'll switch from the left side to the right side, and then just add up. So I'll do maybe a front panel to a certain size. And then when I figure it's a certain size, then I'll, I'll work on the sides to make it wider. Mm. And that's one of the great things about crochet is that you can kind of turn it any direction and yeah. then just pick it up versus yeah. knitting, which you have many live stitches across the needle and it's much harder to start switching directions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Although maybe that's the last time I'm going to compare knitting and crochet. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> you know, I think, I think what happened is with knitting and crocheting, it's, you know, it's been a history where crocheting has been like the stepsister to knitting. And then at one point when we could, when knitters couldn't bring their knitting needles onto the plane for safety reasons, I think some of the knitters started to change to crochet and then crocheting started getting a better rep um, <laughs> from that. So I think that helped crocheting for people to say, okay, you know, I can use various yarns to crochet with not just with knitting. I think in the past crocheting was basically like the um, acrylic yarn, mm. um, the bulky yarns, the worsted weight. But now, you know, everyone's using different variations on the yarn, the different sizes, the different textures. So I think that helped when they couldn't bring knitting needles on the plane. Knitters started using <laughs> crocheting, but they were using the yarn they would use for knitting. So that just showcased crocheting a little bit more. Yeah, and actually, I don't know if you've seen this, but I was just reading, I don't know, a couple days ago, that uh, Fashion Week that just happened, crocheting is everywhere. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There were a whole bunch of pictures of all these designers with these like crocheted outfits. And I was right. like, wow, Melina ahead of the curve, <laughs> like way ahead of the curve. So yeah. Oh, so this one is very intriguing. Okay. And so I feel like there's some construction elements here that I have never seen before. So I don't know if you want to talk about. Okay, so this one I did, um, this is made out of Rowan denim yarn, and I love that yarn. It, it's supposed mm -hmm. to fade like denim and shrink like denim, but they discontinued it. But this is the one I like, and it came in like four or five different shades of blue, black, and the crew. So in this one, what I did is I did a long um, rectangle and then folded it in a certain way where it, it folded from the back to the front and then to the back again. And then um, I added sleeves to it. And then add, and because it was short, I added the lace afterwards. So where the, the lacy stitches in the bottom was added after I constructed it from a long rectangle. Oh, I mean, now that you say that, I think I can see it, but, and then the front sort of part you added on also. I added, I added that afterwards. Yeah, okay. and that's in tapestry crochet as well. Yeah, 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 amazing. I've never I seen love, that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> And then what you'll see in some of my garments is I love fur yarn, so I'll add fur to it at the bottom. So the sleeves have the fur yarn on it. <laughs> okay, let's see. I think, let's see. Oh, and this one is stunning. I mean, the the tapestry crochet in this, I've never, uh, like, I feel like I keep saying this, but like, I've never seen that before. <laughs> So, I mean, how, did you pick that up just on your own or did someone, did you take, you know, did you learn at, at the feet of someone or how did that happen that that became your sort of signature? Well, I like, with tapestry crochet, um, I like doing the blankets first. So I wanted to create baby blankets and I wanted to put like teddy bears or um, elephants or cats in the blankets. So I wanted to learn the, the um, process. So it took, it was at trial and error because I would, um, now I carry the yarn under the stitches as opposed to letting the yarn fall in the back of it. Oh. So like when I switch colors, the yarn would just hang and then I would just pick it up. So it would be loops in mm -hmm. the back. Mm -hmm. 
And so what I've learned is to carry it under the stitches so that the back, the inside and the outside would be the same. So if I did a blanket, the front and the back would be the same. It would be clean because I hate leaving an end at the end. So this <laughs> way, um, when you turn it over, you will see no strands inside. And then that's uh -huh. why. Um, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, but it was trial and error. It took like several attempts. I did different things to finally get the, the process of doing the tapestry crochet. So like the complicated patterns, I don't know if my little uh, cursor is going to show up on the recording, but I hope so. But like, so in the front view of the sweater, I mean, a good part of that front view is the tapestry crochet, the panel over here to on my like looking at it left side and then yeah. down the front and then at the, the base, uh, you know, in the sleeves. So like, but these are, these are really complicated patterns. So are you, do you chart those out or do you make it up as you go? How do you decide? Okay, so on this sweater in the front, I kind of cheated a little bit. I used a book, a book <laughs> had the, um, the design and I like it. So I just broke it up and um, put it different way, different places where I want it. Instead of doing this, just one big continuous um, stitch. Well, I'm sorry, <laughs> one big continuous piece um, I just broke it up to, to the pieces that I like. Mm -hmm. So this one, um, the front and the back came from a book and then like the sleeves on the bottom, I just made it up the square. So mm -hmm. some of it's mine, but mostly it came from a book that I, I like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think that's cheating actually. No, <laughs> <laughs> Especially because you did make it your own and, and, and then you turned it. It looks like, right? Because you did yes. some up and down and then you took a strip and turned it sideways yeah yes and that's i think that's how my crocheting has evolved because now instead of just doing one front piece one big front piece i'll do smaller pieces and then just change the size and then start working on a different side and then go back to like the front or the top or the the, the left side or the right side mm. i mean it's such a great use of what's possible with crochet and yes. the sense of and you know I one thing I like is that I have like a short attention span and so <laughs> <laughs> like you can do a lot of different things and kind of fun have fun and play and then they yeah. all somehow come together into uh, a finished object rather than just being pieces that are sitting around you know waiting. Yeah. yeah yeah okay so let's see yeah so here you know you're using much more subdued color but so texture becomes the story it seems yes this one um this is basically all the gold yarn that i could find that i added to the sweater um so for this one um because i belong to the crochet guild we have our annual luncheon and the theme was fairy tales oh. so this was my rapunzel sweater where she turned string into gold straw into gold <laughs> so that's the sweater i made for the, the for the luncheon for that year and then um so in this one I kind of changed the shape a little bit where I started in the front with kind of a triangle V and then build up around that. Mm. And then I added the, um, the, the ribbon, I guess, ribbon yarn where it, it ruffles on its own okay. to the sleeves. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think you also, uh, although you were given a theme for this, it seems like you do have, um, work like with an act sometimes you work with actual like idea very yes. concrete ideas it's not just sort of oh i like orange you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no I, I sometimes most sometimes i plan it out and i know that i wanted like on this particular sweater i wanted a different shape in the front so i used like a v shape to go up front and then try to work out the sides and then in the back um i had I wanted to use the gold differently instead of working one continuous pieces. I wanted to work separately and then add it on to the piece. So on the back, you can see one's going a different direction. And then on top of that, then I started adding um, other yarns to it from the, and then so I can work from the top to, I can work from the, sorry, the middle to the top, and then I can work from the middle down. So mm -hmm. I don't have to stay in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And this is another one where I like, so another stitch I like are um, shell stitches. So mm -hmm. I try to incorporate that as well in different designs. 
And do you find like, as far as like the drape of the garment as when you're changing these directions, does that affect it in, a, in how it hangs in the drape? Um, so I don't, it, it doesn't because what happens is when I change direction, I don't make the piece to my exact size. Mm -hmm. It might be smaller where I can add um, to the size to make uh -huh. it fit for me specifically. Uh, so I'll never make a piece so big where if I want to fit, that I can't change it because you want room to um, fix it or alter it. So I'll make it smaller than what it's supposed to be. And then I can add to the sides later. So the sides are where you make your alterations. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hmm. <laughs> I feel like everyone watching is going to be like, oh, I think I'm going to go make myself. <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> yeah. Here's another one. Well, I see now the scallop stitch. Yes. and a lot of tapestry. Now I feel like I can really identify all of this, but, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but the colors, I mean, this one, talk, can you talk a bit about your colors here? Okay, so in this one, um, there was, this was one of the yarns I like. Um, one of the companies, Karen, had this spa yarn, um, which really worked up nicely when you crocheted with it, and it was thin enough where it wasn't bulky, so I really liked it, and this was all the colors I had, so I tried to incorporate it in the dress because they discontinued the yarn. So I had to go through my yarn stash to find different colors. So that's how come it has so many colors. And then you try to match them up. So like on, on the back piece, I had the white and the black and the brown. So I tried to stay within that color frame by just alter, um, alter I'm sorry, just switching the colors from um, row to row to kind of make it blend a little bit more. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. And did where did you wear this? Or I mean, I'm oh, so this was <laughs> <laughs> it was one of my birthday outfits. So this because I've been crocheting a while, I have to now pick specific holidays to crochet for. So I always crochet something new for my birthday, um, and then if there's a special occasion. But every <laughs> birthday, I have a new outfit. So this was a birthday outfit. Well, I I have to say that when we did our. Uh, when we did our project together and it was really at the request of this uh, company that was making a video, the whole thing was really so we could make like this 90 second video, amazingly, uh, that was like advertising this design award. And they came to my house to videotape and Wilena actually crocheted an entire sweater just for that day, if I remember correctly. <laughs> so, <laughs> which was sort of amazing because we were, we had three weeks to crochet this crazy huge Yes, piece. yes. <laughs> that was so insane. <laughs> but Robin, do you know with that piece, I was part of the group that broke it apart to make smaller blankets from it. And yeah. we went to Minnesota for their knit out and we was working on that, cutting it and everything to make smaller blankets so that it could go to charity. I was like, I will never use that color again. That color was all over me for days. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's true. So just so people will set put the link, but it's basically where I'm turning a water tank on the tower on the top of a building in Manhattan into a shape of a, a pencil. And so the yellow of the pencil was the bulk of the work and yes, I can't look at that color without <laughs> gagging. <I know. laughs> so you even got double. I know. Because you worked on it after. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But I was really appreciative because that was 200 pounds of yarn that yes. we used. And so I'm glad it actually ended up uh, being turned into blankets that, that are I, maybe still in use. Who knows? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a stunner. This is a real stunner. Thank you. So, do you, uh, do you want to talk a bit about? Okay. So this is my, I guess, um, African print design. So I try to do like a mud cloth type um, design in the front with the black and white. So this is 100% wool. Mm. And then I found the bead. So I added the bead. And then in the back, because I like tapestry crochet, I just did different squares and then added it to the back. But that was my inspiration to do some type of mud cloth. Mm, I love that. And I see like there's an A. Is that supposed to be an A or am I just making no, that? Up? It's an A. Okay. <laughs> so is that stand for something or Africa? Yeah, that stands for Africa. And then the other designs is like sometimes when I just start 
crocheting with tapestry crochet, I'll just do random design and just add it in. So mm -hmm. like the back where you see the triangles, I did that. And then in the front, I just like to switch the colors while I go. So mm -hmm. just adding the black and white. So sometimes it's just random designs. When I start, when I want to decide to switch colors, mm -hmm. I'll just switch it and then just make random designs. Yeah. Well, it's gorgeous. Really. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah. then um, also in the front is a beaded strand. So yeah. you know how the beads come on the strand. I just crocheted over it and then added it to the piece. Oh, nice. And then there's a large bead up at the collar, the neck. Yes. Yes. And then that's just um, basically sewn on. I just strung the um, yarn through the bead and then just attached it that way. Mm, beautiful. Thank you. And this one, <laughs> I mean, this is amazing. Thank you. So what do you just, I'm curious, because as I was looking at some of them, I was like, okay, so what do you wear under these? <laughs> okay, so so for this one, <laughs> so for this one, I wore something under it. So it's probably a pink um, tube dress. You know, one of those body dresses that fit mm -hmm. tight. So yeah, I, probably, yeah. I, I wore that one under this one because it was really lacy mm -hmm. and you would have seen everything through the dress. So if it's a solid fabric, most of the time I won't wear, I won't wear like a um, slip or anything under it, mm -hmm. you know, but on this one, I had it to wear something under it to cover up the mm -hmm. lacy parts of the dress. And then it just depends what color you put on underneath so that you can bring out the lacy stitch. So like in this one, I have the pineapple, I have the shell stitches. And um, so this dress, basically, I wanted lacy, more lacy stitches and the yarn is much thinner. So usually I work with heavier yarn. Um, but on this one, I work with thinner yarn, and I think it's about four different types of yarn mm -hmm. that I use in this one. And then I wore this, be I wore this to an event. So I like dancing. I do Chicago-style stepping, and it's like a couple dance, and I wore this to events because the theme was pink and white. Oh, okay. Yeah, so maybe this is a good chance. To, can you just say more about this dancing? Okay, well, Chicago-style stepping originated in Chicago, so it's like... Um, the the next the next type of dance after like the lindy hop the bop or the jitterbug mm -hmm. and it's a couple dance and it's like a culture um and a lifestyle so it's just not learning it you know you you practice it you continue to dance over the years um they have different events different places um and you just hone the craft so it's like another type of um craft but in dancing that you continue to do so you can continue to grow and um improve yourself in this one, the, the, in this particular dance, the man is the lead and you have to follow, but you still learn the steps so you can understand it and continue to dance with different people all over the world. Uh -huh. So do you have a partner that you always dance with? No. <laughs> so that's a good thing about Chicago style stepping. You uh -huh. can be single. You don't have to have a partner. You can just go and learn. Uh -huh. And there are men that come and they'll dance with you. So, you know, they, it could be a couple, it could be a single man and they'll dance and you have instructors. Um, so that's what makes it really nice because it's a grown, it's a grown person's dance and you just dance with different people to enjoy. And that's what makes it so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds really fun. Yeah. Cause the, and, and in this particular dance, you know, the men, always, the women always outnumber the men. So <laughs> <laughs> in any dance, so, you know, you're always going to have more women than men. So it's nice that the men, um, go around and dance with different people. Do you hear that, men? <laughs> like, <laughs> there's some nice ladies out there, you know, yeah. in pink dresses. So, <laughs> like a hint. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, I was curious what was going on with one side. The the the. Is there just one sleeve is pinned back, or did you? Oh, okay. What's happening here? <laughs> this is a one-sided dress. So because it's on the mannequin a little weird, but the dress, it's like a tube top dress and then the sleeve comes over the shoulder. Oh. So it's a one-sided dress. It's just that it's different on the mannequin. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it's like, all right. Well, I mean, it does, it shows off that side so beautifully, the lace side. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this one, you know, it makes me think about like Annie Albers and, you know, Annie Albers, she's like a weaver who's kind oh. of having a moment. I mean, she's, she has passed. Oh, okay. she, she was um, more like early 
to mid 20th century okay. and uh, was a big weaving teacher. Um, was part of a school that was in North Carolina called the Black Mountain School. And okay, uh, I've heard of that, yes. Yeah, so she <laughs> was like a big force and she's having somehow like a reemergence right now. A lot of artists are looking at her work. And uh, for some reason, that's what I thought of when I saw this. But oh, okay. um, yeah, maybe. So here it looks like you have just done tapestry. It's like pretty straightforward. Is that double crochet mostly or single? Okay, so this is mostly single crochet and mm -hmm. there's a few double crochet um, in the dress. So this is one of my earlier ones. So we want to okay. say like 2003, 2004. Okay. Um, again, I love rowan denim. So I try to use that and I love gold yarn. So back in like the early 2000s, the gold yarn was true gold yarn with metallic. Like now it's like a blend with acrylic and um, metallic strings going through it. So this was one of the the yarns that I enjoyed using. So I wanted to do something with the denim and the gold. And so in the, on the front, you can see, like this is one of the early ones where I did the square in the front and then went around it and then started to work from the, 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 the waist down mm. to the, um, I guess the knee area. And then in the back, it, it's a little different because I had different colors of the denim and I wanted to showcase that in the back where mm. I went from like light, dark and medium mm. um, on that dress. Mm. Mm. Well, now I can see that it, it clearly does come earlier um, because, yeah, you they get more complicated. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then and this one, I couldn't find the front of this, so I apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay. But, I mean, there's a lot to see just right here. It looks like it's the back just because it yes. is the back on the mannequin. So I don't know. Do you want to talk about this one? Oh, okay. Um, so this one was my Black History Month sweater. So it showcases um, various symbols from Africa. If you look in the bottom left-hand corner, that's supposed to be the flag of Africa. And then the other symbols around, you have the cowrie shells, you have different symbols. So that's what I wanted to represent in this one, a celebration mm -hmm. of Africa and the symbols with the, um, the kente cloth and then dinkara symbols. So I added those to this particular piece. And yeah. this is 100% wool. And I think for me is when I use the wool, it, it holds better than the acrylic. And um, this one this one is like almost 10 years old, 10, 15 years old. And it still looks like I made it yesterday. Oh, wow. Wow. And, and just because crochet does make a thicker fabric, I assume they're pretty warm sweaters, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, have you seen this guy who's a big crocheter? Getting he also is having a moment called Nasat. Yes, um, I saw him. He had a um, pop up shop in um, New York, along Thirty Seventh Street, and I went to visit his um, showcase. Oh yeah, what, summer. Yes. What did you think? It was nice. It's I, I had seen it before, but I wanted to see it in person. Yeah. And you know that's and he's done really beautiful work. It was really nice, and I think Reese this past two weekends ago, I think he was in um. Brooklyn at mm -hmm. one of the fiber festivals. I wasn't able to go see him there, but I was glad I got to see his pop-up shop. Yeah, yeah. I guess I follow him on like Instagram or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and I always think of you when I see oh, him. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think he's also super fast. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, sometimes I, I get a little annoyed when people ask these questions, but I'm going to ask you. Okay. How, how long does it take? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so it, it, <laughs> I, it depends what it is and what I need it. Yeah. So if I get two full weekends, I can do something in two weeks. Like I did make okay. something in a week, but that means I have to do, I have to have a full weekend. So that means Saturday and Sunday, I have to be able to work on it like, like eight to 10 hours. Mm -hmm. And during the week, at least four to five hours a day mm -hmm. for me to finish something in a week. But normally mm -hmm. it takes like two to three weeks, depending on when I need it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Another thing, like, well, I said I was going to stop comparing, but knitting's a lot slower. <laughs> it's a lot slower. Okay, so this is incredible. Okay, thanks. And I, I'm guessing you did this for an event. Yes. Okay. So this one I did for the same crochet luncheon that I mentioned earlier, where the theme was fairy tales. Yeah. So this was my queen of heart dress. 
that I created for the fashion show. And then I did actually did wear this on a Halloween <laughs> as my costumes. <laughs> so I do get multiple uses out of the dresses and the pieces. And so this one, um, you can see it has a lot of tapestry crochet with the heart. Um, and then it has the ruffle yarn. And then um, as you can see, it has the shells. And then I went different, I did different um, sides. I went up and down and I went from left to right. And um, the one on your left is the front and the other side is the back. And I try to incorporate like the red, white, and black in both the front and the back. Mm, mm. And most of, I think some of the yarn I have had to purchase for this, but some of it came from my stash. So that gives me an opportunity to go through my stash to see what I have. Yeah. <laughs> always trying to use up that stash, which sometimes yes. <laughs> gets smaller. I don't know about you. <laughs> no, it never does. It never gets smaller. <laughs> just yesterday, I went to the Sheep and Wolf Festival. I was going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> but I was good. I didn't buy too much. I yeah. tried to stay like with a color theme. So this year, I was trying to do something in beige. So that's what I stuck with, with beige. Uh -huh. so uh -huh. I try to have a plan when I go. Because yeah. if not, I'll be picking up all these different yarns. And that's a lot. <laughs> Well, and it gets overwhelming too. Yeah. It's almost like I get sometimes a little paralyzed, like, I don't know why, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this is like a masterpiece in my Thank mind. You. I mean, it's so beautiful. And it's so inspiring too to hear you talk about how you construct it. Because if I was to think, oh, well, let me make a dress, I mean, I, I would hardly know where to begin, but when you say like, well, you make components and then you are putting them together and doing the shaping like in the sides and, you know, that feels so much more like, oh, okay, I can at least imagine that versus yeah. if I was like, I mean, to say, oh, I'm going to sit down and start at the bottom hem and work my way up. That doesn't feel possible. So. Okay. <laughs> I think I think it's because I enjoy the yarn so much and there's so many different beautiful yarns out there that I want to incorporate it into the dresses and just use different ones because you know most things you see is one color or mm -hmm. one type of yarn and for crocheting because it's um costly to get one in one type I try to use different ones so that I can experience using different fibers and yarns and textures and that's why I enjoy putting them in the dresses yeah I love that. <laughs> also, you have them kind of all your favorite things in there. Yes. Great. Okay, so here's another brightly colored one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so was this for your dancing? So this one originally was made for a crochet, the, the National Crochet Convention. Oh, okay. And I wanted something in red. Um, so for this one, the construction comes as I'm going because I couldn't have imagined creating something that, like this, right? It's just the way that the, the pieces go and then you try to fill it in. So like the front piece was done and then I did the sides and then in the back, I was like, okay, let me do something different. And you try to change it up a little bit so the style doesn't look the same. Mm. And I love red. Everybody knows I love red. Right? I got like five bins of red yarn. So I try <laughs> to use that up. And um, as you can see, I also use like the, the fiber, the fun fiber in there that looks almost like fuzzy. So mm -hmm. I love that one. And the one, the, the, the picture in the middle, the yarn where it differs, that's how the yarn came. Mm -hmm. So, and then, so I like using yarns like that, the variegated yarn that has the different, um, oh, okay. the different patterns as it goes up. And I think that was like one of the first ones that had done it. So it's before they started making it like stripe yarns. That was one of the few that they had. So I enjoyed that one. And then I added the, um, the sequence step by step. Along, so I, yeah. yeah. So that one yeah. you had to do individually with the sequence. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I've worn it, and I've worn it since to one, a dancing event. So it just depends. Like certain dresses I can wear again. So this is one of the dresses I've worn about three or four times. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's like a true party dress if I if Yes. I <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So, uh, yeah, so then after that party dress, this one feels a little more uh somber, but okay. it, still it. <laughs> it still has a lot of color in it. <laughs> so, this was one of the last ones I did for this past September. 
the theme for the, I went to a Chicago stepping event and the theme was um, fall affair. So okay. I wanted something with fall colors. And then some of them, they have this new yarn that's like cupcakes or something where you have the different variations going through the yarn as you're crocheting. Mm -hmm. So this is one of them. And then I had, the, I had the green yarn home. So I was like, let me use the green yarn. So in this one, the construction um, didn't come out as well as I wanted. So the back was supposed to be the front, but it had too much ruffle. So I switched them around. <laughs> And then it oh, came out. Okay. Okay. You, yeah. And then if you look on the back, you can see like there's an orange string going through, through mm -hmm. it a little bit. And that was because I made it too big, right? So I tried to uh, make it smaller. So I ran the the, the um the string through it, the yarn through it, mm -hmm. to tighten it up a little bit, to, just to give it a little bit more weight. And then okay. so on the front end, I added a little bit more ruffle to it, so it gave the waist a definition as as opposed to just being straight down. Yeah. 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 And how was it to dance in? It was fine because the back is fine because it flows. So you can move. <laughs> so that was perfect. Yeah. So it was just too much ruffle for the front. Like yeah. The front piece has a little ruffle, but that ruffle in the back was just too much for the front. So yeah. I just switched it around. Yeah. That's great. See? Yeah. Do you ever um, do make dresses for anyone else? Um, no, re not really. You know, I think what happens is people see the dresses and everything, and then I think it's cost sometimes. Because for me, it's if I'm gonna make a dress for someone, I'm gonna use the same yarn that I use. Mm -hmm. And I have no barrier when it comes to yarn and which ones I'm purchasing. But for someone you're gonna make a dress for, it's a little bit harder. So you wanna use a finer yarn, and it depends on the size of the person, because you don't want a worsted weight, because that adds weight to you. So you want to bring out their curves. So you want to use a smaller yarn. You want to use a, um, a thinner yarn. And then that sometimes is more um, yardage. Mm -hmm. And of course, might be a little bit different. But I do make sweaters for people as gifts. Uh -huh. I will give a sweater as a gift. Because <laughs> that's just for fun. And then I don't have the added stress of it not fitting. You know, people like it. I can do it and just do it at my leisure and give it to the person. And if it has to be adjusted, I can adjust it. But it's for fun and I'm not stressed out. So yeah, that's yeah. probably why I haven't done anything for anyone. Like I've, I, like they've asked me and I'm like, okay, send me an email about it and everything. And then mm -hmm. it just stops there. Cause if you're serious about it, you'll send me an email. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess just because I was thinking too about like seeing those fashion week things, I'm like, okay, so why has a designer not snapped you up and said, okay, you know, come be part of my team here, you know? <laughs> But also I was talking to somebody just the other day about like, she, uh, she's made like 170 of those little dish cloth things that you okay. mm -hmm. put onto your, you know, you button onto your, uh, your oven handle, you know, oh, like, okay. you know, you wipe your hands on them. Mm -hmm. She just, whatever, started doing them and then, and she gives them all away as gifts. Right. And so we were just talking about, you know, that whole thing of, you never can quite actually get paid for your time. And exactly. then when you put the cost of the yarn and, you know, someone did a project where they recreated a, a dress that's like a prehistoric garment that someone found. Um, I think it was woven in, in cotton and uh, someone recreated it just to see like how many hours would it take and what would it cost? I don't even know if they charged more than say minimum wage and it took something like a thousand hours and wow. it, so you know it would be multi thousands of dollars to uh if someone had to pay for it so that's always a an issue i think with you know when you're making something that in theory i can easily imagine people saying oh this is so beautiful can you make me one exactly yes and then not knowing kind of the cost of materials your time and then all this other things of like fitting it, you know? So, yeah. So I think, yeah. So I, you know, I guess what I'm, the conclusion of what my friend said is she's happy to knit them as gifts and yes. give them because to put a price on it, so actually kind of almost like belittles it. Right. You know? So, yeah. And well, I don't know. I mean, there's also the fun factor. I'm imagining this is fun 
to make oh, no, it. Oh, I enjoy it. Yes, <laughs> I enjoy it. Because I think what happens is as a kid, I always wanted to be like a fashion designer. And I always thought it was going to be with fabric. But things happen and I had a different career and I went a different way. So crocheting has allowed me to like hone back into that fashion designing, but I never thought I would use yarn. So this allows me to use yarn now and I'm still like that fashion designer. So that's yeah. why I have fun doing it. It's yeah. something I always wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so here's some more gold. Now that I know gold is uh, <laughs> one of your faves. Yes. Well, you know, what, um, so this one is, I had this yarn in the house, some of it, and it was, I guess, for the National Crochet um, Convention several years ago. And um, again, I used the beaded lace on the top. It was a stranded beaded lace, what I used on the top for that mm -hmm. one. And this one is one of the early ones. So you can see the directions basically stay simple where I did the, the rectangle in the front and then just went around the rectangle. And when I thought it was enough, I just went from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top. And mm -hmm. then the back is kind of simple with a little lacy. Mm -hmm. So on this one, I have to put something under it because that's the back of the dress. So I have to put a slip under this one. <laughs> that was what I was looking at. I was like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, I think your complicated ones are just, you know, mind blowing, but they're also something very beautiful about these more, these simpler ones while you're clearly you were now I know you were sort of figuring it out in a way, yeah. but, but they're, they are, I keep coming back to, they're like very painterly, you know, your Thank choice you. of colors and the subtle differences in textures. It's very beautiful. Thank you. You know, the, the thing is I like freeform crochet but I just couldn't sit there like doing, so this is my type of free form because free form mm -hmm. crochet, you do those little pieces and you have to sew them together. And I don't think I have patience for that. So I want to do something similar to that where I wasn't um, constricted to a pattern or to a specific way you're supposed to do a design. So this is how I discovered to do something like this with my free form. Well, I didn't know that free form crochet was sewn together. Yeah, because, yeah, it's either sewn or crocheted together because they're little pieces. Most people make little pieces and then they connect them. It's uh -huh. not like one huge big piece because it's just different directions. So most of the time people are sewing them or like crocheting them together. Oh, I always thought they were just like you start one place and you just kind of go crazy and just keep attaching, attaching like as you go. Not so. Oh, OK. <laughs> like, some people might do it that way. But yeah. others do smaller pieces and then just connect it as mm -hmm. they go. Which actually does make more sense in a way. Yeah. Now yeah. That you it. yeah. <laughs> so this is also a very um, elegant, elegant uh, Thank one. Thank you. With your pineapple. Yes. <laughs> in a, um, so that's like a metallic yarn that I did the, the pineapple in. So this is one of the early ones too, because I kind of stayed like even on both sides. As you can see, the left side and the right side basically have the same design. And um, I think I wore this to um, one of the Barbie conventions that they that I go to. Um, so that was one of the dresses for the evening. Okay. And I couldn't tell. I'm assuming the answer is no, but that is not a zipper up the back. Is it? Correct. It's just sewn together. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. I was thinking, well, I do want to ask you about the Barbies, but maybe, maybe later. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now I see this one has a lot of the scallop and the fake fur. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's gorgeous. It's Thank really you. gorgeous. And Thank you. do you think of that as a sweater? Yes, that's a sweater because mm -hmm. it just comes below the 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 um, bottom so it's not, it can't be a dress this is a okay. sweater okay yeah yeah beautiful thank you oh and then this one i was like is this a self-portrait <laughs> <laughs> i like um like doing faces and then so i like to do the faces and then i like the yarn for the hair uh -huh. so it's a way to do the yarn um with the hair and everything make it curly so this is like a fall color um scarf so um, I just incorporated it too to see how it would come out. Are you happy with it? Yeah, I am. <laughs> Do you wear this it? This is like the second one I've done. So uh -huh. I've done a smaller one, but I've used the same face and this is a bigger one that I've done. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you. And here you are. Yes. 
And I see, you know, bringing granny squares up out of the granny world. Yes. Making them very hot. Yes. <laughs> so I could, I don't know that I found, let me see. No. Okay. I, could, I don't know that I found another picture of this dress um, separate from on your body. So. Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure if I sent one. Like I had a little problem with the, sending the pictures because it was new to me. Yeah. So. <laughs> So I apologize for that. No, no, no. I mean, this is great. Thank I think it's you. great to see all of those like on the mannequin, but now to see it on you is like, you. oh, okay. You know? <laughs> so in this one here, I actually use a pattern because oh. the colors are changing. I actually grafted this one and then I followed the pattern in the front. And then I decided I wanted to use granny squares with the yarn. Because again, this was one of the yarns that was like a um, DK weight but it's thin enough to use as a dress so it wasn't bulky enough. Mm -hmm. um, it's been discontinued since, but um, I, I love this yarn. So I wanted to incorporate the colors again. The theme was fall for one of the stepping events. And that's how I created this design for that event. Mm -hmm. And I see also the scallop down at the bottom, yes. like the bottom panel. Yeah. And then, yes. the, and then the bottom panel is done in one, one yarn. So that's how the yarn came. And then, so I found a different type of yarn that was similar to the colors I was using and then incorporated that into the dress. Yeah, I really love how it's like picking up all those other colors yet is, yeah, in this sort of gradient way. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. And then this is like you created an entire photograph on your, <laughs> your yes. dress. <laughs> So this is one of the one of the recent ones I did. Um, the Crochet Guild of America had their convention in New Hampshire this year, and I wanted to do an African theme. So I um, again I, I found a book that had the, the the design of the Serengeti on it. So I wanted to put that in the front, and then I used um, different types of orange yarn, and I wanted to add like give it an African theme. So I added the cowrie shells. Mm -hmm. to it. And then in the back, I found a photo of um, the hippos playing in the water. So I did that as the, um, the train in the back. And so for that one, did you graph it out? Well, both of them are already grafted. Oh, okay. So I could just follow the graph. And so mm -hmm. when, I, when I do the tapestry crochet, I'm going line by line. Um, so you're going from left to right, and then you're going back from right to left. So I'm following it from side to side. I think some people might stay on one side and just continue. Mm -hmm. but I'm going back and forth on both sides. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, and so when you turn it over, as you can see, if you look behind my legs, you see the design a little bit. Yeah. And it's a clean design. That's the back of it. But in the back and the front is going to look the same. Mm. 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 And here. <laughs> yeah. So, say, this, say more. <laughs> so this one I created, I think, in 2010. And it was for the design contest for the Crochet Guild of America. And this one came in third place mm. um, as a winner. And this one is my entire design. So I grafted the entire design. I created the flowers myself um, and then added the different colors to it. It has like, the blue has a little sparkle to it. But when you look at the back, the front flower, the flower in the front is all over, is the, the design in the back of the dress as well. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so... Do you, have you ever like reused the flower design in another garment or anything like that? No, I just use it in this one because I specifically made it for this one. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. But I've worn the dress before. I've worn the dress again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. I knew it we had the back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I just keep repeating myself, but it's really <laughs> stunning. And Thank you. And so the sort of long in the back, shorter in the front. Um, I see you use that design a lot in the longer dresses. Yes. Um, you know, what's your thought about that? Um, some, like, I like to have a train in the back sometimes and just show, sometimes I like to show off my legs. <laughs> yeah. So I'll make it shorter in the front. It just depends on design. Um, so in this one, the back was long and I didn't want the flowers in the front. So mm -hmm. I decided to cut it short. And the, the dress before this one, um, I had decided to add the train at the end. So the dress was going to be short. And then I said, well, I need something else to make it a little bit more elegant. So I added the train afterwards. So in the dress before this one, the train comes off. The train is not attached. Oh, the, that one. 
right. So I, the, the train is attached by buttons, so I can remove the train and just wear the dress as is. Oh, and in the back, I'm assuming under the train is just plain. It's not uh, with the photograph. Correct. Uh -huh. Correct. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, wow. well. Wow. Yeah. And then I remember this one when you okay. first put it up on uh, Facebook because it's didn't this one also won a prize, didn't it? Yeah. This one at the I, this one won 2009. It won, I think, second place, and then won People's Choice Award. Mm -hmm. So on this one, I grafted the the skyline um, of New York. I used that in a dress. So it's two different types of material. The bottom is with the the worsted weight yarn mm -hmm. um, that you would use for blankets and everything. Because that's when I graft something that big, that's the yarn that I'm used to using, the worsted weight. Mm -hmm. um, really, well, I use thinner one, but I, you know, I can. But I like the worsted weight because that's just what I'm used to. And it works up pretty nicely and I know the size of it. And then on the top, it was a thinner yarn that I used. Uh -huh. so it was like a little thinner than um, the bottom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which kind of makes sense, I think, right? Because, well, for you to be able to see what's happening in all that work that you did, you know, if it was too thin, it would, it would just, you wouldn't be able to see it, I don't think. You know, I, know what I, mean. yeah. I think so, but I think also you lose the height. So this way, when I use a heavier yarn, it gives me more height to it, mm. um, so I can gauge a little bit better. Like, so I'm so used to using this type of yarn for the blankets and everything, I can tell the size by the yarn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do we have a picture of you in it? No, I was thinking this is <laughs> in it, but, <laughs> but this is similar in similar yes. sort of like black, white, silver, gray. Yes. Yeah. This was this was one of the early ones I did. Um, I just found all the various black and white yarns, either that I had in the house or that I wanted to use. So like the bottom is just white and black mixed together. So that's more of a tapestry crochet that I used. Mm -hmm. And then the other yarns um, basically came like that. So the stripe, I used a solid and then I um, used the white in between. Mm -hmm. But um, that one's going side to side as opposed to top to bottom. So that one's not tapestry crochet. Mm -hmm. And then I just look for various yarns. And then in the back, um, I just, I use a little bit of tapestry crochet with the black and white. And then sometimes when a dress is long, I like to add a little lacy stitch to it just to change it up a little bit so it's not as solid as the whole dress. So I added the little lacy part in the back. Yeah, very like kind of peekaboo. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and then this one, this might even be, I think it might be our last image. Uh, okay. So this looks like you know you would wear it to a very fancy event it was, was this also for a specific um event yes so um also with the crochet guild of america they have design contests as i won the other two so i entered this in a design contest this one didn't win but again i love the color red mm -hmm. um and then i used it for a fashion show but on this one if you look at the bottom that's the free form i was talking about so i had taken mm -hmm. a prudence mapstone class um, and she's the queen of free form. And then I had all these pieces, so I wanted to add it. So I added that as the bottom of the dress. And then the top piece, um, I just did a little tapestry crochet, as you can see with the red and the white. Mm -hmm. And then with the sleeves, what I did is the ruffle yarn, I just opened it up and used it as a solid fabric, as opposed to just letting it ruffle, as you can see at the bottom of the sleeve. Okay. Yeah. So it's a little hard to tell in the photo, but in the sleeve, are those, the parts that look kind of lacy, are those actually open work right there? Right, that's the ruffle yarn. Are you uh, familiar with the ruffle yarn when you open it up? Yeah. When you open it up, it looks like a, a netting. Okay. So that's what that is. So I just opened it up and crocheted around it, oh. leave it open wide, and then added it to the piece. Oh, I've never seen anyone do that. Yeah, no, very effective, yeah. Thank nice. you. <laughs> yeah think oh no there you are <laughs> i was i thought that was the last image no so is this a newer one too okay so this one's a newer one and i just recently wore it to another doll convention two weeks ago oh. um so again i wanted to create this one using the colors of the gold and the purple and um create a train on the bottom but on this one you can't really it has openings where the, the granny squares are mm-hmm and it's like openings, like peekable openings that you can see. But again, I like to incorporate like the tapestry crochet, the granny squares, 
Um, and usually the granny square is help because it covers a lot of space sometimes on the dress when you're trying to decide what should I put there. So like you can see right underneath the arm, I have a granny square and everything. So it worked there because um, the front was cut off and I was like, what, which can I add? to mm -hmm. make it a little bit different from the other dresses. So I put the granny square there. Mm -hmm. And it has a little tapestry crochet, as you can see in the front, and then some variegated yarn as well. Mm. Yeah, here it is, yeah. Oh, you can really see, see that. the opening, yes. Yeah. Oh, but it's open, but not like a flap. It's connected right. with the hem. Oh. Right. And then the scallops in the back, you still got yes. them in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That, that's my, you know what it is, is that's my lacy stitch. It's yeah. a little lacy, but it's closed, and I love that. And I think the reason I use the shell stitch is because my um, godmother, when she taught me to crochet, that's one of the stitches I asked her to teach me. So yeah. I fell in love with that when I was eight, so I continue to use that stitch. And it and reminds I, me of her when I put it in there. So I keep calling it scallop, but it's shell stitch. It's a shell, mm hmm Okay, all right, sorry. But it could be a scallop. I guess when it's on the end, it can mm -hmm. it's like a scallop, mm -hmm. so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh and then this one is now i'm just guessing from the way you look this might be an earlier one um well my hairstyle changed so <laughs> yeah this was this probably was in the early 2000s okay yeah for this one and again this is my original design i wanted to do something with quilting so i used like a quilting design and then, um, as you can see, it has various quilting designs in the front of the dress as well as the back. And then for the bottom, I wanted to do something different. So mm -hmm. I made individual squares um, and then connected them with that. But I wanted to use those colors and just create some type of quilting on the dress. And did you wear this one dancing? I haven't worn this one dancing because it's a little bit, I wore this one to um, the Barbie convention. Oh, okay. And to the Crochet Guild of America. It's probably okay. in one of the fashion shows that I wore it in. The only difficulty with this one dancing because of the open space, you want to be careful so you don't step on it. So yeah, I haven't tried to dance in this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, be careful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that's that. So I, I do want to ask you about the Barbies. Okay. So what, what is that? <laughs> okay, so I've been collecting Barbies since 1991. Um, so I've collect Barbies and fashion dolls that particular size. So when you go to the convention, it's all the people who have collected Barbie dolls that come from all over. Some they come from outside the U.S. or in the U.S. and they have this giant convention. So sometimes it's 800 to 1,000 people that come to a specific city. So last year, this past year, we were in Kansas City. The year before, we was in Arizona. So there's different places. This coming 2020 will be in Las Vegas. Hmm. Um, for the convention. So at the convention, you have the fashion show, which I love. So that, because that allows me to showcase my designing skills. Hmm. But you're creating a Barbie dress in life size. So I'm crocheting the dress. Hmm. So I'm crocheting one of the Barbie dresses for me to wear in the fashion show. So I've done that for like since 1999, wow. I think. 1999 or 2000 that I've been going. So almost 19 years. So hmm. every year I do it for the fashion show. Um, and then they have like a, um, you can create dioramas with Barbie in a diorama and you do that for the competition and you can put her in one of a, a doll in a dress. And then they have like the banquet, they have the luncheon, um, they have workshops that you can take, you know, and then of course you get convention doll and then you get other dolls and they have um, sales rooms that you can purchase other dolls um, mm -hmm. during that time. So it's like, it usually runs from Tuesday to su Sunday. Well, the last event is Saturday, so like Tuesday to Saturday. And what makes it so special is people are creative there. So they'll take a regular Barbie doll and make it one of a kind. Mm -hmm. So they'll change her completely. They'll redress her with fashion, with fabric, you know, beads, and sequins, which is beautiful. So you see a, a wide range of talent at the Barbie convention. Well, and it seems like you really uh, have a, a, a thing, a specialized thing of making uh, Barbies that represent, um, I don't even know what the right way to say, but like uh, black, important black women. Yes, I have, that's what I collect. So I make sure that the dolls that, that are out there, that I collect the ones that tell history um, of different women and men throughout mm. the time. Uh-huh. Oh, I, maybe I missed, so there, I, is it wrong to say Ken dolls? 
No, you can say Ken Dolls. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? <laughs> I think what happens is they, they don't have, like, they curate dolls now, like they have the Barbie and the Ken, but because they're trying to appeal to a wider audience and different nationalities, the Ken doll doesn't really have a name. Like, they do it under the Fashionista doll. So these are fashion dolls. Oh, okay. so you, might see a Ken, you might see a Ken, but most of the male dolls, they have no names kind of now, but they do it more as fashion. Uh -huh. Bring in um, other people to collect them and everything. So that's what they've done now. So you have like Barbie and Ken, but different types. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> well, it's so interesting. Um, yeah, I, I never, uh, you know, I, I have never really knew that Barbie continued on in that way. You know, yeah. I mean, I had Barbies when I was little, but I didn't know. So it, well, I've seen your images. Um, I was, yeah, I mean, I wonder if we can um, even, if you'd be willing to share a couple more, then maybe I could put them in uh, at the end. Okay. Of you know just so people can have an idea it's like okay. if you haven't seen it before it's maybe hard to understand what you're saying you know okay that's yeah. fine yeah so i'm gonna um just uh turn off the recording so um but thank you so much it's really um it's so inspiring to see your work and uh yeah i'm so appreciative of your taking time to talk with me thank you Thank you so much for having me. This has been fun. Thank you so much. You're welcome.